is a little bit of a topic that could hurt your head a little bit but I'll try not to make it hurt too much right now we were just doing coordinate geometry yeah and we were seeing that we were in coordinate geometry we were drawing straight lines yeah and largely when we were drawing straight lines all we needed was two points you just need two points to draw a straight line and we saw that all straight lines no matter if we you know how it was they all had a general form and that general form is y is equal to mx plus c and sometimes you wouldn't get it in this form and you would actually have to make y the subject of the formula and rearrange the equation in order to get it in this form but once you got it in this form this form tells you a lot this form m tells you how steep it is yeah the gradient of it and the larger the value of m is the steeper the line will be right c told you where it cuts the y-axis yeah so for example if i have y is equal to 2x plus 3 i know that you know um m is 2 right so that means that it will be kind of steep and then it'll cut the y-axis at 3 over here so you're gonna be looking something like this you know so just by looking knowing this equation knowing this general form of a straight line right just by looking at it we could you know just by looking at this equation and not plotting anything we could kind of sketch it just by looking at the gradient and the intercept we could sketch it and have a, a, a good idea like y is equal to minus 2x minus 3 means that you know it's going to be a negative gradient so that means it'll be sloped this way and that means it'll cut over here at negative 3 on the y-axis so it's a line that might probably look something like this so just by looking at this alone we could kind of sketch and get an idea as to what the line does look like without actually you know finding any points really if you know it good enough and all of this came from this general form y is equal to mx plus c a way to notice something this here is called a linear equation linear means of course it comes from the word line so this is an equation that we would use to draw lines and the only reason why this works for lines is because look at the x value here this x is to the power of one and this y is to the power of one yeah so whenever you have an equation that is to the power of one like if i had 2x plus 3y equals 7 you notice this equation everything here is to the power of one this is called a linear equation and you notice you know we took this and we started to mess with it right we started to add numbers and subtract numbers just to see what would happen to the line we started to multiply and divide numbers just to see what would happen to the line we started to mess with it to see all of the different things that would happen but one of the things that we never messed with was the power we always kept the power as one well now we gonna mess with the power right because once you have an equation where the power of the variables is one that is a linear equation you will get a line but the minute you start to say well okay y is equal to x squared the minute you start to mess with that power well that is not a line no more you know now when we started to mess with powers now this is gonna turn into a curve yeah so this is what quadratics is about right remember when we started coordinate geometry and we say we could have draw the batman signal well you notice the batman signal uses curves so we had really reached that level 
we were able to draw a house because the house was using lines yeah but if you want to reach the batman level you would have to start a mess with the powers because that is what will give you curves the thing is though that for csec we wouldn't reach the level where you'll be able to draw a batman symbol so don't worry for csec we just basically going to be handling this type of curve here called the parabolic curve so just give this a quick write down and let me just hear when you're done so just like how when we were talking about straight lines we had this general equation y is equal to mx plus c and this was generally the um the, the form of all straight lines right well when we're talking about quadratics this here is the general form of a quadratic so a quadratic equation is a quadratic equation with unknown x has a standard form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a can never be equal to zero because if a is zero then this will be zero multiplied by x squared which means this whole thing goes to zero which means this thing not going to be a curve no more it's just going to be a straight line yeah you must have the x squared in order for it to be a curve, right? So, um, a must not, never be equal to zero. And of course, a, b, and c are elements of real numbers. I hope you all um, remember your set theory. This general equation, a x squared plus b x plus c, burn this into your mind. Let's um let's for a minute take a break and let me go in GeoGebra and let me type in ax squared plus bx plus c. Let me mess with this thing and just see what will happen. So we start in with y is equal to x, which we know is a line that is linear because everything is to the power of one. And we saw here, and if you see it on the side here, this second line I have is y is equal to 2x plus 3. So this is just to remember, you know, 2x, it's still linear because everything is still to the power of 1. 2x means it getting a little steeper, and 3 means it cutting at the y-axis of 3. Okay? You can see I have this next line here, and this is just a revision. <coughs> y is equal to negative 2x minus one so the negative two means it's a negative gradient it's sloping the other way and minus one means it's cutting at minus one so these are all straight lines because the power of x is just simply one but now let me mess with the power so now i have y is equal to x squared let's see what that looks like so this here is your basic parabolic curve and it goes you can see it goes straight to infinity and beyond yeah and you all should definitely use this software to mess with it right so we could see here well okay if we give a, a x squared alone right so remember what was the form Shaze, what was the form of a quadratic equation y is equal to what the general form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c right now look at this equation here i have this equation as y is equal to x squared you see in any bx and any c no sir so in this equation what do you think the value of a is one yes because a is the number in front of x squared and yeah yes, sir. so a, a is one what do you think the value of b is also one how you see in any x here? No. Well, then the value of b is zero, and you hear what I say? Yeah. Yeah. So it's zero. It I have no. So if b is zero, then that whole thing gone, and it I have no x. Yeah. Yes, and what do you think the value of c is? Zero. All right. So we see here that we only have the a value. Y is equal to x squared. We have the b value and the c value here. 
right? We have y is equal to x squared. Let me mess with the a value alone and see what happens to the curve. So in this next one here, I increase the a value. y is equal to 2x squared. So let me see what happens when we increase the a value. Well, we can see here that the curve get a little skinnier. It's squishing a little bit. It's still passing through the point zero zero. Notice that the curve is passing through the origin. Notice both of them passing through the origin. So it didn't really affect the curve up or down, but it squished the curve in. So you can see that when I increase A, the value of A, the curve gets squished in. So what happens when I decrease the value of A? Well, look, I have here a half X squared. Y is equal to a half X squared. I'm guessing the curve will probably get fatter. Let me see. Yeah, the curve got fatter. It came out a little bit more, right? So we could see here that if we, if we affect the value of the A, then it'll affect the squishiness of the curve, whether it narrow or it fat or if it just normal. Right? So, okay. But what if I had a negative A, right? So look, um, this next one here, I have Y is equal to negative two X squared. Let me see what happens when I have a negative A. Wow. So once you, so you see when we have a negative A, that whole curve just flip. Yeah. So the whole curve just flip around, right? So we can see here that all we've been doing is messing with the A value. Notice that we mess with the A value. If we increase the A value, the, the curve gets skinnier, right? If we decrease the A value, the curve will get fatter, spread out a little more. And if we may have a negative A value, the curve will flip. But notice all of them still passing through zero, zero. So we mess with the A's. Let me try to mess with the B's now. Right? So we have A X squared over here. I have Y is equal to X squared. A is one, right? So let me try plus X plus X. And let me see what happens. Now you notice I put in plus X. So that means that now, Shazi, the value of B will be one. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You're sure? So you see in here, X squared plus X. The value of A in this case is one. That is in front of the X squared. And the value of B is also one. That is in front of the X. So let me see when we add this B is one, what will happen to the curve, right? Ready? Let me see. I'll press enter. Ready? Go. All right. The curve shift a little bit. That is interesting. So the curve passing through negative one, the value of B is one and the curve passing through negative one. What if I change the value of B to two? All right. Let me see. Let me put x squared plus 2x, all right? I change the value of b to 2. Let's see what happens. Interesting. The curve goes, cuts here at negative 2, but look, it's still passing through 0, 0, though. But it's cutting here at negative 2. That is interesting. Let me try changing the b to 3. All right, so we could see that the curve went to negative three here and it went to zero, zero over here. So we could see that when we mess with the B value, it shifting the curve to the left. What if I put a negative B? Let me put negative three instead. So um, X squared minus three X. So I'll put in a negative B value. Let's see what happens to the curve. What do you think will happen to the curve, should say? I don't know. It looking like it looking like it'll flip if 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 you mess with the a value, right? And you notice how when b was positive three, the um the r uh, the, the 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 curve was cutting at negative three, right? 
So now we're gonna change B to negative three, and I have a feeling I know what'll happen. The curve will cut at positive three. See you now? Yes, sir. So now we have an idea, all right? I put um, AX squared plus BX. I'm gonna put it back to plus here, so it cut at negative three. All right, AX squared plus BX. And we can see the B, the shift the curve left or right, all right? So the A value makes the curve squishy, narrow, or broad, or it could flip the curve. The B value, this change the curve left or right. All right, let me see what the C value does do. What do you think the C value does, anybody? Let me try having a C value at three. Because you notice all the time, the curve cutting this y-axis at zero, zero. Eh? So now I'm gonna put the C value at three and let's see what happens. All right, so you can see the C value. When we add the C value, the curve actually um, goes up. Yeah, and now it cut in the y-axis at three. So it's very much like a straight line. That C value there is the intercept on the y-axis. What if we try negative three for the C value? So let's go negative three. Well, we could see here that the curve now cuts the Y axis at negative three over here. So it come all the way down, yeah? So this is interesting. We could see here, and, I, and this is just for your understanding of quadratics, right? That we have an equation ax squared plus bx plus c. The x squared does make it a curve. The a value in front of the x squared does tell you how skinny the curve is. If it's a, a, a high, the higher the a value, the skinnier the curve is. The lower the a value, the, the broader the curve is. The B value sends the curve left and right, and the C value sends the curve up and down, right? Now, at the end of the day, it's not that you're going to get tested on this exactly for CSEC, right? Um, I'm just basically showing you this so that you can have a greater understanding of what quadratics are about yeah so I hope that by showing you that it could kind of clear up what this whole quadratic equation thing is the whole problem with a x squared plus b x plus c is that we had a solve for x and you know for solving for x well you just make x the subject of the formula all right the problem is that we have x, an x squared value and then we have an x value. So when you have, if it was x squared alone, well, that'll be okay because we could throw over the square and just put a, 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 a square root sign over everything. And we gonna have x is equal to the square root or whatever. But we have an x squared value and an x value. So it's real hard to make x the subject of the formula, right? So when we solve in for x, what we normally do is we normally do something. When we solve in for x, right, we normally put a x squared. You all seeing this, right? Yeah. We normally put a x squared plus b x plus c, which is the curve. We put the curve equal to zero. Now, why do we put the curve equal to zero? Well, remember, on the other side of the equal sign supposed to be y, eh? It's supposed to be y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, yeah? So what we're really doing is we're really making y zero, yeah? So. Could anybody remind me what is y is equal to zero? What is that line? Is that a horizontal line or a vertical line? Horizontal. Yes, wow. The line y is equal to zero is a horizontal line. But which horizontal line? Okay. Remember, if it is that I have horizontal lines, right? 
that I have one, two, three. This here is the line y is equal to one. And this here is the line y is equal to two. That is because the x values might change, but the y value is always the same for every point on the line. This line here is y is equal to three. But the line y is equal to zero cuts at zero. That is actually the x-axis, isn't it? And we spoke about this. We spoke about this in coordinate geometry, where the x-axis is actually the line y is equal to zero, and the y-axis, the vertical line, is actually the line x is equal to zero. Yeah? So what are we really doing when we take this curve and we put it equal to zero. What are we really doing? Well, what we really saying is, well, here now, I am putting this curve equal to the x-axis. So I want to find out what are the values for x that are on the x-axis. So essentially, when you have the curve now, and the curve coming like this, you notice that the curve is cutting the x-axis here and here, right? So when it is that you put this form equal to zero and you start to solve for x, what you're actually doing is you're actually finding where the curve is cutting the x-axis. And these are called the roots of the equation. And you don't have to write this down. I think we'll, we have it in a slide later on. Right? So coming back to the sli slide now. Right? Um, if the form is equated to zero, that is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Right? Then we could solve for x. And how do we solve for x? We have to do something called factorizing. Can anybody tell me what is a factor? What is the difference between a factor and a multiple? Just remember, a factor is the smaller one and the multiple is the bigger one. So if you have 10, right, the multiples of 10 will be bigger, 20, 30, 40. The factors of 10 will be smaller. So 5, 2, 1, I think. And 1 is a factor of everything. And itself, of course. So these are the factors of 10. Right? So I could factorize 10. And I have 10. Right? The number 10. And I want to factorize the number 10. So... I could split it up in, so to factorize means just splitting it up into its factors. So I could say, well, two times five. Five times two is giving me 10, right? So that is what we do when we factorize. We split something up into its factors. We saw this already when we did the distributive law, right? So for example, if I have x squared plus 2x. Shazay, factorize this for me. And this is this is not quadratic, sir. This is um, even though it have the squared there, this is not necessarily a quadratic thing. This could factorize real easy. Right? We we did this with distributive law. You could pull out something. You have something common in both of them, and you could pull it out. So try it, factorize that and tell me what are the two things you could multiply to get this? X and two x multiply by x plus 2 and yeah right so if i take these two things x times x is x squared and then x times 2 is 2x so this here this here is the product and these are the factors right these are the factors so the thing is the reason why we like to factorize is imagine if you had x squared plus 2x equals 0 and a man say solve for x. A man say solve for x. 
Were you going to undo Shazay? Uh, if you didn't know about factorizing, what you would I do here? All right, you're going to show the 2x across. x squared is equal to 2x now. But that's not really going to help any. Oh, negative 2x, sorry. Because you're showing it across is negative 2x. But that will help you. Right? I mean, yeah, you could probably divide by x throughout. Right? And you'll actually get, get some sort of an answer. Yes, x is equal to negative 2. So this turns out. If you divide by extra, you actually end up getting an answer. Thankfully, that is great. That is great in this case. X is equal to negative 2. But if we find the factors X into X plus 2, we found the factors. These are the two things, just like 10, the two things that we could multiply in order to get that. Well, look, we're not dealing with powers anymore. We're not dealing with powers anymore. So imagine now the absurdity if I was to say that these two numbers, I have two numbers, let me call this one M and let me call this one N. And I have two numbers and I put in that equal to zero. I put in that equal to zero. So the thing is that what does this mean? This means that, well, the only way that you could multiply two numbers and get zero is if one of the numbers is actually zero, you agree? The only way that you could multiply two numbers and get zero is if one of the numbers was equal to zero, but we don't know which one. We don't know which one is equal to zero. So we go put the two of them being equal to zero, right? So if this factor and this factor equals to zero, that means that x, this x here, could be equal to zero. That could be the culprit. Or maybe it's the x plus two that is the one that is equal to zero. That is this factor over here. So now you can see that when we find the factors, we end up get two answers. In this case, the answer x is equal to zero is a very plausible answer. Zero is the origin, right? And then in this case, we have x is equal to negative two. So look at it, right? Before, when we did it and we divided by x, we only got one answer. And that wasn't particularly accurate, right? But now, we, um, you know, when we factorize, we found the factors and it had it equal to zero. Meaning any one of them could have been equal to zero. So I put two of them equal to zero and boom, now I get two answers here. And guess what? Both of the answers are correct. Both of the answers are true. Because remember, when it is that you have a curve, that curve will cut the x-axis at two places and so you are supposed to usually get two answers usually right you would get two answers usually not always in this case we could see that this particular curve right this curve cuts the x-axis where x is zero over here and where x is negative two over here Right? So this is what we do when we factorize a quadratic. And of course, this here is a quadratic, is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, and c is c is zero. So we don't have a c in this one. Okay? So c is zero. Okay? Now you can see here that in terms of finding the roots and the answers of a quadratic equation, we have to find the factors. The factors being the two things that you have to multiply, right? And then you will usually get two answers. So, going back to this now, right? We can see here that if we form the equation, um, if the form is equated to zero, that is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, then the product of the factors, the product of the factors of the equation would also be equal to zero. So that means that if I have the two factors, m and n, that would be equal to zero. 
right? So when I factorize this and I get the two numbers that is, it has taken to multiply in order to get back this, that will also be equal to zero, right? And therefore, is m is zero or n is zero or? So we can actually use the factors to solve for x. Um, I don't know if you guys want to write this down. You all want to write down this, this slide? I don't think you need to, right? Do you? Yes? No? So let's go into how to factorize this actually, right? So we have four methods of factorization, four different methods, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to tackle method one. Method one is when A is one. So you can see here that, you know, in this case here, x squared plus bx plus c, we have a being equal to one, right? One x squared. So when a is one, we could factorize it usually. Now, this here, when a is one, this factorization is probably the one that you are going to get in c set. So learn this one the most. The next one we're gonna do is when A is not one, when A is a bigger number like two or four or A, that's a different method. But I've never seen that in an exam. But this one, I just see in all the exams when A is one. So this is the one that they're going to give you, right? So we have here AX squared plus BX plus C, and we want to find the factors, the two numbers that we have to multiply in order to get back this. So how do we find those factors? Well, what we have to do is this. To factorize, simply find two numbers. So I have two numbers. Let me call one of them P and one of them Q, right? So I have two numbers. And you want to find two numbers where when you add the two numbers, that will give you B. And when you multiply the two numbers, that will give you C. Right? So this is how we factorize an equation of the form AX squared plus BX plus C. Right? When A is equal to 1, all you need to do is find two numbers. And those two numbers should be that when you add the two numbers, you'll get this. And when you multiply the two numbers, you'll get this. So definitely write down this slide. We're going to an example now. But definitely write down this slide. Again, when you're factorizing a quadratic, you find all you need to do, all you need to do is find two numbers that when you add them, you'll get this. When you multiply them, you'll get this. So let's take a look at an example here. So an example, right? I have um, x squared plus 5x plus 6. So let me come over here and do it, right? x squared, so this is the example. x squared plus 5x plus 6. And I want to factorize this because I want to solve for x. Now, if you want to solve for x, you have to put it equal to 0, right? So that will give us where x is on the x-axis, okay? So what I want is I want two numbers, p and q, right? Two numbers that when I add them, I'm going to get 5. But when I multiply them, I'm going to get so what are those two numbers? Right. So 2 plus 3 gives me 5. And 2 times 3 gives me 6. So therefore, I could simply say 2 and 3. So I'll put 2 and 3 over here. Right. And these are the factors. I find those numbers, 2 and 3, they're both positive. We are starting to deal with negative numbers yet. Yeah. Remember, this could have been negative 5, eh? And if this was negative 5, the whole story changed. Yeah. Right? But thankfully, we're dealing with all positives. So we don't have nothing to worry about. So I'm just going to put positives there. X, X. So these are the factors. Boom. All you need to do. That is it. X plus 2 
x plus 3 story done and if it is your dopey leave man all you need to do is multiply it out x times x is x squared right? 2 times x is plus 2x right? um, x times 3 is plus 3x and 2 times 3 is plus 6 x squared plus 5x plus 6 boom right? so that is all we needed to do we needed to find these two numbers and then just put them in brackets with x's make sure you have the correct sign going on right and you're done right so these are your two factors m and n and remember you're putting the equation equal to zero which means any one of them could be zero so we equate both of them to zero so we'll say okay so therefore let x plus 2 that is this one be equal to 0 therefore x is equal to negative 2 okay? and let uh, x plus 3 this one x plus 3 equals 0 therefore x is equal to negative 3 and so now we know that this is a curve that will cut somewhere here and it cut in at negative 2 and negative 3. So give this a quick write down and tell me when you've done it. So I don't know if you all want to write this down, but this is essentially just the words for what we just did there. So maybe you don't have to write it down, right? But if x squared plus 5x plus 6, then for b, which is this one, it'll be 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. And for c, which is this one, it'll be 2 times 3 is equal to 6, right? So the two numbers that satisfy the condition are 2 and 3. Therefore, the factors of the equation are x plus 2 and x plus 3. And this is where we put it equal to 0. Right? And for each one, we will get an answer x minus 2 or x minus 3. Yeah? So um, I don't think we need to write this down, right? Because the example basically covers all of this. But guess what? Now it's your turn. Try to factorize and solve the following. Two, four, six minutes. Two minutes each. Six minutes, go. The first one we have here is x squared plus 2x minus 15. And we solve in for x one time. Notice a, a is 1, so we don't have to worry. We could just factorize normal, right? So it's two numbers that when I add them, I will get two, positive two. But when I multiply them, I will get negative 15. Five. Very good, thank you. Five plus negative three will give me positive two. So therefore, I have to use the same two numbers again. 5 and negative 3 will definitely give me negative 15. So I have here 5 and negative 3. And I've done x minus 3 and x plus 5. And that's it. That's all. That's everything. That's all you had to do. Boom. Story done. Class over. No, class now over. We still have four more methods. Three more methods to go. All right? And now we can say, well, okay, um, let's equate this to zero in order to solve for x. So therefore, x plus five, this factor, is equal to zero, and x is negative five. And then we have this factor, x minus three is equal to zero, therefore, x is positive three. Uh -huh. x squared <laughs> minus six x plus five, obviously, because I mean, these two are not multiples, right? And in fact, five, the only multiple, the only factors of five is one and five. And five is a prime number. So one and five is the only options. <laughs> but it'll be what? It'll be negative five minus one will give me negative six, and? Yes, sir. And then negative five multiplied by negative one will give me positive 5. Eh? So both numbers in this case are negative. 
So it will be x minus 5 is the first factor and then x minus 1 is the second factor and we just put that equal to 0. So therefore x minus 5 is equal to 0, x is equal to 5 and x minus 1 is equal to 0, therefore x is equal to 1. Boom diggity, minus 7x plus 6. What do you think are the two numbers here? Minus 6 minus 1 will give me minus 7. And negative 6 multiplied by negative 1 will give me positive 6. Agreement? Yes, sir. Okay, so now we have x minus 6 and x minus 1 so you can see once the two numbers are negative or whatever number ends up negative you're putting a negative here and now therefore x minus 6 is equal to 0 x is equal to positive 6 and x minus 1 is equal to 0 x is equal to positive 1. So Raya how do you feel about quadratics now? Is it okay for you? Is it better? But now you understand why with like little things like why do we put it equal to zero? And what exactly are we finding when we put it equal to zero? You know? And that kind of thing. Yeah? yeah. So um so in this case, imagine in the first one, what did we get? X is negative five and positive three, right? So that equa that one, and we saw that in this case the a is positive so for a positive you always have a down curve remember is when we put negative a we got an up curve and eh? so all of these things i want you to keep in mind especially for the next class eh? because the next class we'll have to sketch it right so we know because a is positive it's a down curve this is negative five and, and positive three so negative five over here and positive three on this side so the curve gonna look something like this yeah. In this case, positive 5, positive 1. A is positive, so it's a down curve. Positive 1 and positive 5. So the curve, this curve is going to look something like this. Right? And in this case, again, positive A, so it's a down curve. Right? And, um, and we have 6 and 1. Positive 6, positive 1. So positive 1 and positive 6. Curve is going to look something like this. And remember, this um, this C is where the curve cuts on the y-axis. So in this case, the curve cut in here at negative 15, right? Yeah. And in this case, the curve would cut here at positive 5. And in this case, the curve would cut here at positive 6. Right? So all of these things I want you guys to kind of keep in mind and what I'd like you to do is to just take two minutes I mean I hope that you guys have the solutions for all of this written down if you don't let me know I'll expand it let me just expand it right but what I want you to do is next to the solution just draw a little sketch of, uh, of the graph just like what I had here yeah a little sketch of the graph just let me just so that is the solution for that one right and i know it's kind of scrappy but next to each solution just draw a little sketch of the graph just like what i have here you know with the with, where you're seeing the the roots of the equation where it cuts the, the axis and where you're seeing where it cuts in the the, the the y axis there yeah so um so let me know when you're done done it in terms of drawing just sketching the, the solution okay so you notice that this is when x is equal to one when sorry when a is one and when a is one we could factorize nice and easy and everybody happy right but what if a is not one so this is factorizing quadratics method two and it's a similar thing, right? Now, as I say, it's not that they can't bring this in C-sec. I just hardly see it. This is the one that they will always bring. So this is the one that I want you to practice the most when A is 1. When A is not 1, well, they, they just hardly bring it, but it's still on the syllabus. So maybe, maybe it could come, right? 
So when you have A that is not one, so A could be two, in this case, A is eight, you know? What do you do, right? You can't just divide the whole equation by eight, no. What you're doing is, you're looking for two numbers, and when you add them, you will get B. All right, that is the same as before. But now, when you multiply them, what you will get is the multiplication of A and C, the product of A and C, yeah? So when you add them, you get B, but when you multiply them, you actually get A times C, whatever you get if you take A times C. Now here's the example, 8x squared. So you see here, A is not one, A is eight, right? 8x squared. So, and we saw that the higher A is, is the skinnier the curve is. Eh? So this is probably quite a skinny, skinny thing, right? So AX squared plus 14X minus 15, right? 8X squared plus 14X minus 15. And what do we need? Well, A is not one in this case. So we need two numbers, P plus Q, that when we add the two numbers, we will get 14. But when we multiply the two numbers, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get eight multiplied by negative 15, which is negative 120. So, hmm, this one a little bit tough. This one is a little bit tougher, right? So let me see if you guys, I'll give you all a minute just to work out this little, um, this little uh, brain thing here, a little puzzle. What two numbers, uh, when you add them, you'll get 14, or when you multiply them, you'll get negative 120. I'll give you one minute, see if you can figure it out. Is it 20 and negative 6? 20 and negative 6. Interesting. 20 and negative 6. Right? If I add them, I will get 14. And 6 twos are 12. Yeah? That could definitely work, right? Now, how you go about doing this? How did you how did you do that? I guess I kind of was looking at the things are 120. Just factors of 120, I guess. Right, yes, factors of 120, yes. Well, I mean, it's not particularly that. 6 and negative 20, right? Yeah. But we can't just go and put... Um, we can't just go and put... So we, we, we found... And you know how to write this down, eh? But you found two... Two factors, you had to look at the factors first of negative 120. And you had to look at all of them, and you were able to find two of them 20 and negative 6. Right? And when you find that answer, you can't just go and put x plus 20 and x minus 6 um, is the factors. No. So you have step two now, right? We found the two numbers, 20 and negative six. Step two is to replace the middle number with these two numbers, right? So step two now is I'm gonna have eight x squared plus 14 x. Well, that is really plus 20 x minus 6x, right? And then we put the minus 15 on the end. Nice. So you can see that this one is a little bit more complicated, but we have some steps, right? So let's just pause there for a minute. Let's not go too far, right? So we have this first one here, um, quadratics method two, and the method two is when a is not equal to one. We have this example here. We saw that we had to find two numbers that when you add them, you get 14, and when you multiply them, you get a times c, which is negative 120. I want you guys to write this one down, write down this slide, and let me know when you're done. Nice. So, 
we have here a quadratic equation 8x squared plus 14x minus 15. We need two numbers that when I add them, I will get 14. But when I multiply them, I will get a times c, which is negative 120. So what Chazé did was he looked at the factors for 120. Okay? And these are all of the factors for 120 here. Right? And then he saw that, hey, well, 20 and 6, those two could give me 14. And if I multiply them, they'll give me 120. Right? So it has to be it has to be um, 20 and negative 6. Those are the two numbers that it has to be. So now we go to step 2. So we have the quadratic equation and we say express the middle number. That is the number with B. Right? As the sum of the factors P and Q. So the same two numbers here. I'm going to replace them with the middle number. So 8x squared plus 20x minus 6x squared plus minus 6x, sorry, minus 50. Okay? When we do this, now we have to actually group them. Okay? So you can see here that let's group this one first, right? You can see here that I have negative 6x, right? And, and let me just do it on the side here so that I can walk you guys through it. 8x squared plus 20x minus 6x minus 50, okay? So what we want to do is we want to group them individually so let's i we would usually start with this one first right negative 6x minus 15. well i could see that i could pull out 3 because 3 is going to 6 and 3 is going to 15. yeah so if i pull out 3 now i'll pull 3 on the outside 3 into 2x will give me 6x and if I put the negative over here, negative 3 times 2x will give me negative 6x, right? And negative 3 times plus 5 will give me negative 15. So I factor, I group this one, the, this section here, right? Okay? And now I'm going to tackle this section here. But what I want is I want, you see this one again, the brackets? I want to get that same thing over on this side. So I'm going to put 2x plus 5 over here. And now I want to know, well, what can I multiply by 2x plus 5 to give me this? Okay. And what can I multiply by 2x plus 5 to give me that? Well, 4x. 4 twos are 8x squared. And then 5 fours are 20. So you can see here that I actually have 2x plus 5 here and I have 2x plus 5 here. So therefore, one of the factors is 2x plus 5. Yeah. And now I have 4x over here and over here I have minus 3. So therefore, the other factor is 4x minus. And those are my two factors that I could now put equal to zero, right? So if I have 4x minus 3 equals zero, x is going to be, throw the 3 across, get positive 3 over 4. And in this case, I have 2x plus 5 equals zero. So therefore, x is going to be negative 5 over so when a is not equal to 1, we have a little bit of work to do, right? We have a little bit of work to do. We have to find two numbers that when you add them, you get the middle. And when you multiply them, you will get a times c, which is 120. 
Once you find those two numbers, in this case it was 20 and negative 6. We looked at the factors of 120. 20 and negative 6. Once we found those two numbers, what you do is you replace the middle number with those two numbers. Yeah? And when you do that, you actually split the equation up into two pieces. And when you split the equation up into two pieces, well now you factorize this side and whatever you get inside these brackets, you want to put it on this side too. Yeah? And that will give you your factor. So I know that this is a whole, like, I know all your brain must be hurting by now with this one. Yeah, I know all your brain must be hurting and by now with this one. Thankfully, I just hardly, I don't ever see a CSEC question come to factorize a quadratic where A is not equal to 1. I've never seen it. Right? But it is on the curriculum. So, give this a write down here and let me know when you're done it. So we have method one where a is equal to one and that one does come in CSEC every time. So method one, make sure you learn this one. Make sure you can do this one. We have method two when a is not equal to one. This one, this method is a bit of a mess, right? But I've never seen it. It is on your curriculum. You do have to know it, but I've never seen it, right? Um, and of course here, well, I hope that you guys wrote this down. Um, this is the what I wrote down in the end there, but you guys should know how to equate it to zero and solve the x, right? That is the easy part, yeah? And of course, we have these here. Now, give this a screenshot, guys. This is your homework when a is not equal to one. So give this a screenshot and just say shot when you're done. All right, so next class, we're gonna take a look at some of these questions here. And of course, this is when A is not equal to 1. Eh? Right? So you don't have to do all though. Just do like 2 or 3. Um, because it's really method 1 that I want you to practice the most. Right? Now we're going to move on to method 3. Now this is um, some CUTA software. This CUTA software link is really great. And I'll, I'll, I'll um, show you guys where you can get this link um, to do. Um, this might end up being your homework. Who knows, right? So method one does always come in CSEC. Um, method two does hardly come in CSEC when A is not equal to one. Method three though, right? Method three is my favorite method. Method three is the method that got me through CSEC. Because when I was in earlier class, I was in form four, form five, I had missed the class on factorizing, so I didn't know how to factorize at all. And no matter how many other students I asked, none of my friends could have shown me because apparently them didn't know either. So when it is I cannot factorize or I can't figure out, right? Like say if you get a method two and it's a big number, 120 or something, so and you're catching your tail with the factors and thing. Well, method three will bail you out. Method three is the beloved quadratic equation. And I love this equation so much. This equation will solve any quadratic for you, right? So write this down. Let me know if you've done it. Remember, this is a plus or minus sign. So write this down, this bad boy, and um, let me know when you're done. We'll see how it works. The next two methods, method three and method four, just have to do with equations that you just have to learn off. So you don't have to bust your brain with, um, with, with factorizing anything. And this is why I love the quadratic equation, because you don't actually have to factorize anything. The equation does it for you. You get any quadra any quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Man, you just take a, b, and c and plug it into this equation here 
and you will get x minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Learn that by heart. This will save your life, right? If, you know, um, some poor mathematician somewhere who could not factorize was busting his brain and he came up with this equation that saves everybody. So let's see how the quadratic equation works, right? Um, x squared plus 3x minus 4. So I'll come over here x squared plus 3x minus 4 all right now first um a is equal to 1 here a is equal to 1 so you guys should be able to factorize this so somebody factorize this now and tell me two numbers that when you add them you'll get positive 3 or when you multiply them you'll get negative 4. somebody give me two numbers you add them, you get positive 3. You multiply them, you get negative 4. Sorry, I'm not hearing you. 4 and negative 1. Yeah, pretty good. 4 and negative 1. You add them, you'll get positive 3. And 4 times negative 1, you multiply them, you get negative 4. So we could see here, right? Because A is equal to 1, easy to factorize. So we could see here that... Um, that this is simply x where it was positive 4 and x negative 1, right? But let me just say we was dunce like me in standard and in form 5 because I was a real dunce in form 5, right? I, I just didn't care about nothing because I had now started to learn how to play guitar and I wanted to be a rock star, so I stopped studying my school with Gandhi. So I didn't know how to factorize, but I knew this though, x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This beautiful equation, REL helped me out, right? All you need to do is plug in the values. x is equal to, look at what is a, a is 1, b is 3, and c is negative 4, yeah? a, b, and c. So let's just plug that into the equation. Minus b. What you just do is, just make sure you use your brackets. Minus, and I'll put b in brackets. So if it was negative 3, I would have put the negative 3 in the brackets just to make sure I don't get mixed up with the, the, the minus sign. Right? Or use them brackets. Them brackets will save you. Plus or minus the square root of b, which is 3 squared, minus 4 into a which is 1 into c which is negative 4 you see how them brackets just help you out all over 2 a which is 1 okay so plus or minus okay? so now this is gonna end up being x is equal to minus b negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, let's work out this inside of here, 3, 3 is a 9, minus, well this wouldn't be a minus anymore because this minus and this minus, 4, 4 is a 16, so that's plus 16. And I divide it by 2, x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, what's 9 plus 16, 25? I think so, yeah. Is it 25? Yes. All right, divided by 2. All right. So now we reach a point here where we can't really go any further. Can we go further than this? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Duh. Duh. All right. So now we have x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 25 is 5 all over 2. All right. Uh, plus or minus. So therefore, that means, therefore, x could be negative 3 plus plus 5 over 2, or x could be 
negative 3 minus minus 5 over 2. That is what that plus or minus means. Right? So you could actually is actually two different answers. Right? So therefore, x is this is negative 3 plus 5. What is that? 2? 2 divided by 2 is positive 1. Yeah? And x is negative 3 minus 5 is 8. And x is equal to negative 8. So that's negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. Boom! Same answers that we got when we factorized it normal. So, you can see here that the quadratic equation will factorize anything. What I suggest is, you see that method 2, when a is not equal to 1, you could fire for that. Fire, fire for that because you could just use this equation for, for, it, for that method 2. So, if you see a is not equal to 1, just use the quadratic equation. Write this down. Tell me when you're done. Now, I want to notice something. This here... These are not the factors, eh? This is the actual value of when you solve for x. Remember when we had found the factors using method one, we had got x minus one and x plus four. These are the factors. But when we put x minus one equal to zero, x is equal to one, this is the actual answer. This is when we solve for x, right? So the, the thing is that this equation doesn't really give you the factors. It is actually give you, it is actually solve for x and give you the answer. So just make a note of that though in your mind. Three done it, right. So we can see here that we have three methods so far. The first method was pretty easy when a is equal to one. The second method was kind of tough when a is not equal to one but we see we don't we can kind of fire bond that method because this third method is is the the jesus christ of of quadratic equations it is the savior of us all because it will just solve anything for us right so get to know this formula one time the fourth method last method is a formula thing as well and this fourth method I just see it for almost every paper. So for almost every paper, I the C method four. Right? Oh, by the way, this is method three. So we'll talk about all. Oh, screenshot this homework. Sure. All right. Anything where you're seeing A is equal to one here, you could just use method one. But when you see A is equal to anything other than one, you could use the quadratic equation for it. Yeah? Um, right, method four, completing the square. This does come for every CSEC paper. They love to bring it in, uh, they love to bring it in a paper too, all right? Now, completing the square is quite an extensive topic, eh? And it's, 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 it's I could probably spend the next few four classes talking about this topic of completing the square. I could probably spend the next four classes talking about it. But we don't have that time. So I'll tell you guys what I told my last CSEC class is just learn these formulas you see in here and this is all you need all you need so once you see in your exam you see something doing have to do with completing the square or they have the words completing the square you just remember this formula so write this down tell me when you're done it right <clears throat> now this method is incredibly important and have you has anybody ever done completing the square before no? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Completing the square is actually just that. You could actually just draw these things as squares 
and then when you put them together you could form a square a perfect square that will have these dimensions in it right um, and you know as I say I could go for many 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 uh, classes talking about it but you have a quadratic of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero this can be written in another way we could write it in this form and when you write it in this form this is called completing the square right when you take your quadratic and you write it in the form a into x plus h squared plus k is equal to zero this is completing the square so if somebody tells you complete the square you have to take this and turn it into this how do you do that well there are two formulas that you need to know what is h h is b over 2a what is k k is 4ac minus b squared over 4a right? and that is it so when you meet a question all you need to do is know these formulas here and you had to know them eh? they're not going to be in the formula sheet so this is definitely something to put on your cheat sheet right and once you know the formula for h you work out what h is you work out what k is and then you just write it in this form a whatever a is into x plus h plus k squared boom we're done Right? So let's just do an example and see how this works. Completing the square, let's just do this one. Right? Negative 4, negative, no, 4x squared. Actually, no, let me just do this top. Oh, yeah, no, I'll do this down. 4x squared minus 24x plus 27. All right, so this is the one I'll do and what we have to do is we have to rewrite the following in the form of completing the square so we have to write it in this form over here oh. real simple real easy all you need to do is know your formula right so we have to write it of the form a into h plus no x plus h squared plus k is equal to zero we have to write it in this form this is the complete in the square form where h is b where is b negative 24 right all over 2a over 2 times a where is a 4 right so when I calculate negative 24 divided by 8 where's that negative 6 3 yeah, negative 6 negative 3 so h is negative 3 let's work out k k is 4 times remember use your brackets when you're using these big these big things don't just put in numbers use your brackets so 4 where's a a is also 4 where's c c is positive 27 that's a big number okay minus b what is b b is negative 24 squared so you see how i do that there eh? i am mixing up my negative signs i put the brackets and i put b whatever b is i put b inside the bracket use them brackets here right divided by 4 into a which is 4 right so who huh. i wish i had a competent calculator lady 4 multiplied by 4 is equal to 16 times 27 is 432 minus well negative 24 squared will be positive so 24 squared is 576 Ooh, divided by 16 okay. and I'll just come across here so k is equal to 4 to the 2 minus 576 is 
negative 144 divided by 16, k is equal to negative 9. So we see here we have h is negative 3, we have k is negative 9. Now all we need to do is put it in this form. So therefore, a is 4. So I'll put 4, open brackets, x plus h, which is negative 3. So that is x minus 3. So this is x plus h, where h is negative minus 3. Right? Um, squared, right? plus k, k is negative 9. Let me rewrite that. Let me rewrite that, right? Just make it a little easier for you. So we had to write it a into x plus h squared plus k is equal to 0. Yeah? So now we could say, well, a is 4 into x plus h is negative 3 squared plus k is negative 9. So that means that it's 4 into x plus minus 3 is x minus 3 squared minus 9. That is it. We're done. So we have now put this in the form of um, ax squared plus bx plus, um, no, sorry, in the form of completing the square. So we can see completing the square is just a matter of knowing the formula for h, knowing the formula for k finding h, finding k, and just putting it in this form. So you have to know this form by heart, and then you have to know these two formulas by heart. So these things should be on your cheat sheet, right? So uh, I think you, you guys wrote this down. So write down this one here, and let me know when you're done. Right. <clears throat> now, let me ask you something, and I'll ask Shizé this, right? We put this in the form ax, um, sorry, in the form of completing the square. We put it in the form a into x plus h squared um, plus k. Right? We saw that there are some negatives. Can we solve for x from here, Shazay? Do you think we could solve for x from here? Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Let me try to solve for x. So what I'll have to do to solve for x is I'll have a true across the nine. So now I'll have 4 into x minus 3 squared is equal to positive 9, right? Now I have a true across the 4, so I'll just end up with x minus 3 squared is equal to 9 over 4. Now I have a true across the squared to get rid of the brackets. So now I'll just have x minus 3 is equal to the square root of 9 over 4. And if you remember your laws of indices, that is the same as the square root of 9 over the square root of 4. So that will be 3 over 2. So now I have x minus 3 is equal to 3 over 2. Therefore, oh, no. I mean, yeah. The square root of the number 9 over 4 is 3 over 2, but can anybody tell me why this is wrong? If you punch in your calculator the square root of 9 over 4, you will get 3 over 2, yes. Can anybody tell me why it's still wrong? Like 5 times 5 is 25, right? Yeah? So therefore, the square root of 25 is 5, eh? But guess what? Negative 5 times negative 5 is also 25. So therefore, the square root of 25 could also be negative 5. Remember? So when you have a square root, you have two answers. It could either be positive 5 or negative 5. Whenever you have a square root. Uh, Shazé, you remember this? Yes, sir. All right. So that is why this is wrong. Because it's not just 3 on 2. No, sir. It is positive and negative 3 on 2. It could be either one. So now I'll get two different answers. X is now equal. Well, 
x minus 3 is equal to positive 3 on 2. And then I could have x minus 3 is equal to negative 3 on 2. Yeah, so my two answers come from the square root sign. Yeah, and, um, and now I could say, well, x is equal to 3 on 2 plus 3, how much ever that is. And then x is equal to negative 3 on 2 plus 3, how much ever that is. We all could just work out the final answers. So write down this last piece where we solve for x and just tell me what the final answers for x's are because I'm real lazy to go in my calculator right now. All right, let me do it. Yes, good. 9, so this is 9 on 2. This is 3 on 2. Today we did quadratic equations. And what we saw is that a quadratic equation is actually the equation for a parabolic curve. Right? And this is where we now starting to mess with the, 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 the indices of x because for a linear equation, x has an indice or an index power of 1. So for a quadratic equation, we could see that we start to mess with it. Um, we now have x squared. And of course, x cubed is that's a whole other scene altogether. That's not even that's a cubic equation. That, I don't know even how to do that in CSEC. Actually, you do it, but not real. Okay. Um, so in terms of quadratics, we saw that we did it with this parabolic equation. We saw that is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And the a, b, and c just do different things to the curve. The a, if you increase a, the curve will get thinner. If you decrease a, the curve will get fat. And then if you have a negative a, the curve will flip and become, you know, this from this to this. Yeah. We saw that the b just take the curve and shift it left and right. And we saw that the C is just like in a linear equation where the curve cuts the y-axis. The C carries the curve up and down. We saw how you could factorize a quadratic equation. And why do we factorize a quadratic equation? We do it so that we could find where the curve is cutting that x-axis and that is real super important for many many ap applicable reasons yeah um so we we saw four methods of of factorizing the first method was the simplest nice easy one where a is equal to one and that is the one that you are going to get in csec exam so we our, our pong earlier on that one as easy one. The second method nobody needs to care about because of the third method. Right? The third method is the wonderful quadratic equation that could solve anything for you. However, the fourth method, completing the square, does come not in every exam, but every other exam it has come. And you see that in completing the square, we have to put the quadratic equation in, the, in in a different form a into x plus h squared plus k so we have these two new things h and k and we see that this h and this k well they have formulas of their own that you can find use to find h and k but what exactly is h and what exactly is k that is what we're going to see in the next class. In the next class, what we are going to have to do is we are actually going to have to learn how to sketch a quadratic equation. So we actually have to learn how to sketch the curve. And we already know a little bit of how to sketch the curve. We know that A if A is negative or positive, that will give us a down curve or a up curve. And we know that once we factorize, um, that will give us where the curve cut in the x-axis. And we know that plus C gives us where the curve cut in the y-axis. So we have some ideas as to how to sketch a curve. But next class, we'll go a little more in detail as to how to sketch a curve. 
Now, I've never actually seen you having to ever sketch a quadratic curve in a CSEC exam, right? I, I think I've seen it in maybe a paper three, right? But it is on the syllabus, so we do have to do it. And when we sketch the curve now, that is where we'll see the importance of the completing the square and where we will see what exactly H, because we know what A does do, what B does do, what C does do. We know what those things are. Next class, we will see exactly what H is and what K is.